Welcome to Sunday School, and uh, it's good to see you all. Um, and we hope to see lots more children come back in soon, don't we? Uh, when the restrictions have eased. But let's just commit our Sunday School to God in prayer first. Now, what do you think we should be praying for? Any idea? You can shout, shout out, put your hand up in fact, um, and say some ideas of what we might pray for at the beginning of Sunday School. Mm, any ideas? Hannah? Everyone else can come back soon, yeah, that's a good one. We'd like to see more people, wouldn't we? Mm, what about something to do with these? Help to listen. Listen, because Henry's going to be teaching us the story. Patrick's going to be doing the memory verse. We want ears to listen, minds to understand, don't we? Okay? And most of all, that we understand it in our hearts. So let's, let's pray. Dear Lord God, we thank you that we can come to Sunday school today. We thank you for the children that are gathered here and for those who can listen online. We pray that you would be with us and be with those at home. We pray that you would help us to understand. We pray for... Um, Henry and Patrick as they uh, teach the lesson and do the memory verse and we pray that we may be able to see many more come back in when we are allowed we ask all these things knowing that you are able to give us far more than we ask or even think in your name, Amen ok, let's head on to our first song God is still on the throne and as we, as we sing, as we read it through and it's played um, well, there's some key themes that will come out in the story later on. on to our reading so if I could ask uh, Lois to come up and we've we, we read through Acts last week didn't we or a part of it uh, for us our, our story last week and it's an amazing book and I think if if you feel able to it's a, a good book to read it's full of church history how the church uh, began the early church and all the difficulties that they faced so we're going to be learning about one such situation today and that involves learning about a new character. We don't know a lot about him, but what we do know is quite amazing and there's a lot to learn from him. Uh, so, Lois, if you would come and do our reading, please. Have you all got your Bibles open at Acts chapter 6? We've all got them? Already? Yeah. So if I read the first verse, and then together we'll all read the second, and so on. And I think we're reading the whole chapter, which is only 15 verses. So, Acts chapter 6. And in those days, when the number of the disciples was multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily ministrations. And together, then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said, It is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you, seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And the saying pleased the whole multitude, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Ghost, and Philip, and Prochorus, and Nicanor, and T Timon, and Parmenas, and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch, whom they set before the apostles, and when they had prayed, they laid their hands on them. And the word of God increased, and the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly, and a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith. And Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. Then there arose certain of the synagogue, which is called the synagogue of the Libertines and Cyrenians and Alexandrians, and of them of Sicilia and of Asia, disputing with Stephen. And they were not able to resist the wisdom 
and the spirit by which he spake. Then they suborned men which said, We have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and against God. And they stirred up the people and the elders and the scribes and came upon him and caught him and brought him to the council and set up false witnesses which said, This man ceaseth not to speak blasphemous words against this holy place and the law. For we have heard him say, that this Jesus of Nazareth shall destroy this place and shall change the customs which Moses delivered us. And all that sat in the council, looking steadfastly on him, saw his face as it had been the face of an angel. Okay, thank you, Lois. So we've heard a lot of difficult names, perhaps, but there was one name that kept repeating. Did anybody pick that out? No one needs to give some clues. Isaac. Stephen, that's the man we're going to be learning about today. So uh, I'll hand over to Henry now, and he's going to take us through our lesson. So first question, what do you think these pictures relate to? Go on, John. That's it. It's a courtroom, isn't it? So we've got a judge with their wig at the top, um, and we've got a courtroom at the bottom, and someone in handcuffs because they're guilty. Now, today, children you are going to be the judges, okay? We haven't got you wigs, but you are going to be the judges of this story because our story involves a courtroom and it involves two parties and one of them was guilty. But I want you to be listening today and today you are going to tell me who was actually guilty. All right, so let's begin our story. And as Pastor said this morning, isn't it? It's a true story. It's an account of what happened. And the start of, of the story uh, where Stephen is introduced is um, just before that what, what did we learn of last week can anyone remember what we learned which story we learned last week go on Ananias and Sapphira exactly and it was the Lord Jesus had been raised up to heaven and the apostles were the uh, start of, they were the start of the church and the church greatly increased in number and many people came to trust and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ for their, for their own saviour. And the church was built up. And what happened was that the apostles, they couldn't cope. There was only 12 of them and there was thousands of people that believed on the Lord Jesus that were joined to the church. And the apostles were in charge of preaching. Um, they were in charge of looking after the poor and visiting the sick and needy. And it was just too much for them. And because there was too many people, they weren't able to, to look after everyone, look after everyone. And there were a few people who came to the apostles and said, look, you're neglecting the widows. You're not able to do all the things that you should be able to do. And so what happens? Peter stands up in the crowd and he says, look, I understand what you guys are saying. I understand what the crowd was saying. What we'll do is we'll appoint how many men? As deacons. Who can tell me how many deacons were appointed? Go on, go on, Joel. Seven, that's it. Seven deacons were appointed. And deacons are those people in the church who are elected and appointed to help with the practical running of the church, to visit the sick when they're sick, to help distribute to the poor and to look after the needy of the church. And that's part of our Christian service and certainly part of the deacon's Christian service. So seven men were appointed and they have difficult names, but the one that we do have that we know is Stephen. Stephen was appointed a deacon. Now, Stephen was a man full of faith. He loved the Lord Jesus Christ ever so much. And he was a man full of the Holy Spirit, the Bible tells us. And he wasn't just a deacon that did his job. He was a deacon that did his job really, really, really well. Just like we should at, at school and in the classroom. We shouldn't just do a good job. We should do a really, really good job when we can. And Stephen went and he preached. And he did many, many wonders. Um, and as you can see here on the screen, 
people who were lame, who used crutches, didn't need to use them anymore because he was able, through the Holy Spirit and through his Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, to perform miracles. And many people were saved. Many souls came to understand the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. And what, what happened? They were baptized, which is an obedience to the faith. That's what people should do when they believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. So the church prospered because Stephen was a deacon. Well, that didn't sit well with the Jewish leaders. They weren't happy at all. They hated the Lord Jesus Christ and they hated Stephen because he preached the Lord Jesus Christ. And so what did they do? They captured him and they brought him into the courtroom. And here, Stephen, at the end of Acts chapter 6, verse 15, he's brought to the courtroom. It's called a council in, in God's word. Um, and Stephen was there in the middle of the courtroom and he was told, you need to answer for your crimes, for what you have done. And the courtroom was hostile. What that means is that there were no friends in that courtroom for Stephen. No one actually wanted Stephen to walk away innocent. They all wanted him to be condemned as a guilty man. And you can imagine what it's like when you're surrounded by people that don't like you. It must have been distressing and it is sometimes distressing for us isn't it when there are so many people that bully us or uh, don't like us around us but Stephen was a man full of peace and in the next chapter Stephen's given an opportunity to speak to the court and he starts off by going right back to the Old Testament uh, chapters and he speaks about Abraham then he speaks about Moses then he speaks about, um, uh, sorry, it goes Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, and then Moses. And he speaks about all these Old Testament men. And he says, look, in their day, they were rejected. The generation that Moses was in, they murmured against him so many times. And now, look, we have the Lord Jesus Christ, and you have rejected him. He, he, say, he uses quite strong language, and he says, you stiff-necked people, you are so slow to learn. The Lord Jesus Christ is the Savior. He is able to save you from your sins, but you have rejected him. Guess what the response was to that, that sermon that Stephen preached in that courtroom? Can you guess what happened? Well, they hated it. They hated Stephen. And Stephen was so at peace, even though the crowds around him were so angry at him. And he, in his peace, looked up to heaven, and there he saw the Lord Jesus Christ at the right hand of God. And he says, I see the Son of Man sitting at the throne of God. Even in the midst of all this anger, he was at peace. Well, when the courtroom heard that, they were so angry that they thrust him out of the courtroom, they dragged him out of the city, and they stoned him. There they picked up stones and they threw it at him until he was no more. But Stephen, even in this time of pain and suffering, can you, can you remember what he said? Pardon me. anyone remember what he said? What am I doing? Just S, there you go. He said, forgive them. Forgive them, Father. They don't know what they're doing. Just like we, the Lord Jesus Christ said um, on the cross, Stephen says, lay not this charge, to, lay not this to their charge. He said, forgive them, Father. They have sinned and murdered me and are murdering me, but please forgive them of their sin. Well, we come to the end of the story then. It's time for you to tell me who you think is innocent and who is guilty. We have on the one side the Jewish leaders who um, condemned Stephen and condemned him as guilty and murdered him or, or stoned him. Who do you think was innocent or guilty? Stephen or the Jewish leaders? Don't, you don't need to put your hands up. If you think Stephen was guilty, stand up. If you think the Jewish leaders were guilty, stand up. And here my judges have all stood up and they have condemned the Jewish leaders who, you can sit down now, who were guilty, weren't they? Stephen did nothing wrong. All he did was preach in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and he was murdered, he was martyred for it. Well, this brings us on to three points to learn, isn't it? And perhaps there have been times at school where you have mentioned that you were a Christian and 
because of that, people have made fun of you. And it is easy to think, actually, what, we'll do, what I'll do is I'll never mention the Lord Jesus Christ again. Well, Stephen is a really good example of being brave to speak about the Lord Jesus. And you know what? I, I will confess to you, sometimes I don't like speaking about the Lord Jesus at work either. You know, I, I'd much rather say, oh yeah, I had a good weekend. I didn't, you know, I won't mention church. But that's not what we should, we should be brave like Stephen and even mention um, the Lord Jesus Christ and be brave to speak about him. Second point, forgiving those that hate you. Stephen was a fantastic example, wasn't he, of forgiving those that hate, hated him. Even when he was about to be put to death because of the, 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 the hatred of others, he said, forgive them, Father. And so we should learn to be forgiving. The, the grudges that we hold as brothers and sisters one toward another, it's not right. We should be very forgiving, knowing that we have much to be forgiven of in ourselves, aren't we? We are sinners and we need the forgiveness of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then finally, how to deal with suffering. Thankfully, we live in a country where we can read our Bibles and um, we can come to church uh, and there's no, no issue. No one bats an eyelid, really. No one minds us doing these things. But there are other people in other countries where they are persecuted, they suffer because they love the Lord Jesus. Well, Stephen, it says, fell asleep. It doesn't say that he died, he fell asleep. And what does that mean? His body rested, but his soul went to heaven. And that's one thing that we should always think about when we are in a place of suffering, that actually if we are right with the Lord Jesus... We will go to a place called heaven where we will never have any more tears. We will never feel sorrow anymore. So those are our three points to learn about Stephen. Uh, and obviously the courtroom experience where he was declared guilty, but he wasn't guilty at all. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Henry, for that story. Uh, we're going to have another song now. And it's just to encourage us, this one's to be brave. Henry was saying, be brave. We've got to stand up for what we believe in. Stand up for Jesus at school. Okay, hello everybody. So today's memory verse then is from the first epistle, the first letter of Peter in your New Testament. So here it is, 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 16. So it says, Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, 
Now that first bit's interesting, isn't it? I'm sure you've suffered a lot, and I've suffered a lot, when I'm naughty, when I've done something wrong. I deserve to be punished, and you deserve to be told off by your parents, probably. We all do things wrong all the time, don't we? We think wrong things. We might do something wrong or say something, and we think, that's not right, and I'm ashamed of that. That, that was a wrong thing. I shouldn't have said that. But here it says, if any man, if any person, that means, suffer as a Christian, like Stephen in, in the Bible, or when you talk about the Bible or God or the Lord Jesus at school or to your friends, if you suffer for that, because someone says, what are you talking about, the Bible? Or how do you know about God? Who are you? Who, who was the Lord Jesus? If you suffer because you're brave and you've prayed to God and he's given you um, that strength to say something we, it's very hard to do that in our own strength God can give you bravery then let him, let her not be ashamed but let him glorify God on this behalf glorify God give thanks to God because God is looking down upon you That the Holy Spirit is shining upon you God is happy with you when you mention something about the Bible or something about God it could just be something small, couldn't it? And people look at you thinking, what are you talking about? And you know that people are raising their eyebrows and looking around at each other. God is pleased with you. God is blessing you. God is shining down upon you for doing that because it's a brave thing to do. It's a very good thing to do. So let's try and memorize this and let's read it together. Yet if any man suffer... As a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. That means because of this, because of that thing that you've done. The Lord God is blessing you and shining down upon you. Let's rub out the black words then and see if we can still do it. Let's do this one then again. I wonder if you can remember it. You've probably got much better memories than me. So... Yet, if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf because of this, because of this thing that you've done. And let's try and rub out some more words then. Right, there's not many words there. If you can do this, we'll be very impressed. So... Let's try again then. Yet, if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. So let's see if we can be brave this week. And uh, if you pray to the Lord, he will strengthen you because we don't have that much strength in ourselves. We're very weak, really. So well done, good listening, thank you. Thank you, Patrick. So, we've been hearing a lot about suffering, haven't we, today? And Stephen, you know Stephen, not the Stephen we've been learning about, but Stu Superintendent Stephen handed me this booklet yesterday, and it's entitled, Why Does God's Creation Include Death and Suffering? Now, it's, uh, a lot of people in this, in this world um, think, how, how can God allow all these things to happen? How can there be a God if there's illness such as cancer or if there's natural disasters like earthquakes or anything like that? Well, this book, tries to, this book answers it, and the answer is in, in the Bible as well. We know that, we know that God, at, the start of the book of, at the start of the Bible in Genesis is where the, the first man and woman fell, wasn't it? That's where sin originated from, came from. And ultimately, all these sufferings that we see on the board are from ourselves and from, caused by the sin in this world. So men and women tr trying to blame God for these difficulties, they're wrong. And if, you, if you're interested, you can have one of these books too at the end. But be like, be like Stephen. Those illnesses and natural disasters do not need to shake our faith we can still believe and trust in Jesus Christ. He has saved us from sin. And just as Stephen saw heaven before him, 
we can have such a hope as heaven as Stephen did. So we have the promise of eternal life. Whatever suffering has come our way, we can look to Jesus Christ. And that's an encouragement when we're in, in school and facing difficulties with our friends. Then we can think of the promise that God has given us of sins forgiven and also the promise of eternal life. So if it's, a, it's only 20 pages long, but if you'd like one, we can give one of those at the end. So uh, we'll close Sunday school for today. You've all listened really well. Again, you're superb. So let's, let's thank God for our Sunday school.